Look out. I'm gonna jump right in the truck. You had me worried, Dan. You rolled into camp with a haircut, driving a Nissan Armada, and you're eating an apple. <laughs> Total change, huh? <laughs> I rented it. <laughs> I don't think mine would have made it. The tranny was slipping, and the one tire with the bulge was going. <laughs> 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 a couple cases of energy drinks. I haven't studied maps at all, so got to go out and do a little bit of uh, recon work. But you were encouraged by the number of dead deer you saw. Absolutely. I mean, everybody told me low numbers. It sure don't look like it by the highway. There are dead deer everywhere on the road. So they must be moving. There's a lot, of, there's a lot of sign in here. Yeah. I think we should be hunting in the campground. <laughs> so what you're saying is I picked a good campground. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you map scouted the campground, did, did you? I did. I map scouted yes. this campground, and this finder. was it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. All right. Hope you All find right. something good. All right. We would be back. There's supposed to be a low density. Deer are sitting in people's front yards. <laughs> so part of the plan is we've been seeing all these deer uh, in the yards and real close to the campground. So I want to check, you know, loop around on these roads and get as close to behind those houses as I can. And I bet you that's an overlooked area that nobody would look at, right behind the houses. And uh, with the number of deer we're seeing in those yards and stuff, I wouldn't doubt it if that's a good area to hunt. But I guess it depends on if the people in the houses are hunting back there. So we're trying to get behind some houses where we've seen a bunch of deer in yards and see if there's any activity out there. And as we're navigating in, we hit this fence uh, back in the public and there's a sign on it. So we came over to see what the sign is. I figured it was a deer farm or something, but it's not. It says woven wire fencing. And it says something about this is designed to keep the high number of deer out of an area eating the vegetation. Interesting. They don't do anything like that back in Wisconsin. Not that I've ever seen. And we're just on, uh, on the road up here looking down and we finally found some oak trees down here. And we're looking and we had some really steep terrain coming down. And we saw some real heavy trails coming down here. There's a lot of feces down here. There's this heavy trail here. This area looks pretty good. A guy could get in here and wander through here and find some good sign under one of these oak trees. I could get on something. And, uh, there ain't much for oaks out here, so no, they're a little not. isolated. It was kind of pretty out here because there's so much maple. It seems right, exactly. Like. A lot no. of pretty colors. Yep. I found a spot where there's a sliver of public land. It's connected with a bunch of other stuff, but then it comes in behind private land and there's a few dotted cornfields there. And yeah. The deer have to stay out there if they're there, but I didn't see any out in those fields. I saw all the deer like within five miles of here. Right. We drove around and, and found most of the deer you could see were people's yards. Yeah. Eating the grass. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy just right here. You know, like there's, 300 yards away, there were 10. Two just next to the driveway over here when we pulled in. It's a good thing, though. How's it going? Pretty good. How are you? Good. Ready to hunt? Yeah. <laughs> What about you guys, ready to hunt? Oh yeah. Always. No, also spring uh, spring and fall turkey tie. And yeah, our archery privi privilege. Right, that's the one you sign. Yep. Alright, we're here in Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm ready to go hunting. I was just uploading a podcast and looking at the map and there's a lot of stuff that I'm excited to check out. I'm assuming y'all feel the same way. Nobody's been in this area, right? You've been here a little bit. You're close to. North about an hour and 45 minutes. Okay. So, new area, new country to check out. Excited to be at the Public Land Challenge. We got more people coming in tomorrow. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Ready to, ready to go hunting. I'm going to just keep saying that until I go to sleep. So, going to sleep. <laughs> See you tomorrow. It's the morning. I'm trying to find my keys. That's going to allow us to move the vehicle in the direction that we want. Like I didn't even do anything last night is the thing. It's like I was barely even in any of my stuff. It's like they should just be on top of something.
Success. The time. I knew they had to, I, I knew they had to be close. I have completely started to take everything out. I was like, well, I'm gonna take every single thing out. Cause like, I know they're here. Am I going the right way? Didn't look good enough. Got impatient and that's the thing. That's what we're gonna try to try to do differently when we're hunting is we're gonna try to be a little more patient. I guess the, the main thing is, is I'm trying to figure out where or what the different habitat types are like in this area. I've been looking at it on the map for a couple weeks and you know, you can only look at a map so much before you start driving yourself crazy because you just can't get any further, in my opinion, without knowing what the vegetation type is. You know, you can make your guesses. You can spend a lot of time looking at a map and, you know, never really getting anywhere. So we're about to go do a little drive around, try to learn the area a little bit, and then maybe walk in somewhere if it's, uh, if it's looking like... That makes sense to do, but we got like a pretty good drive. And what I'm doing is I'm starting on my furthest range and, and, and kind of the my favorite looking spots, I guess. Looks good. I think one thing also that is helpful if you're in an area that the leaves change, kind of take note of like right now, this is different than what we were seeing in Ohio. See that color right there? That like green and yellow right here on this one. That was helping us when we were looking at a distance. The green and yellow trees, you could just be like, okay, that's where we need to go scout. Look for sign over there because, you know, that's the only place where there's oaks. And if you're on kind of on limited oak stands, if you can just take that color of the tree and look for that as you're looking at a hillside, it really can help you zone in. The crow's hazing it. Yep, there I got a little bit of them. There he goes. We're back up now. That's cool. Awesome. Breakfast time. I realize there are two things you're going to find when you're hunting with me. Go me coffee. We're gonna have peanut butter, and we're gonna eat it. I'm, I'm gonna, it's gonna get gross, really. <laughs> it's just two consistent things. Change, you know, at some point it may be able to change, but pretty addicted to the peanut butter at this point. Oh, 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 shoot. Just a little dirt. Let's have a map moment here. So that stuff on the, actually over on the side of the road is, it looks like if you go up there, there's a bunch of big openings and stuff. Way back in there, there's these habitat breaks. I mean, that is getting back there. Like just as the crow flies from where we're parked, I bet you that's a mile. 1.96 as the crow flies. We're gonna get to doing a hiking today. Or soon. <laughs> Dang. As the crow flies, and you know how much terrain is in these parts, as you can, as you can see. Doing some early morning glassing, trying to see what's out here before we get uh, into the scout and to find something to hunt. Just looked like a good area. There's a nice leeward ridge over on the other side. There's a lot of does around here, a lot more than we got back home. You might be higher up that ridge if there's more oaks up there. Look that draw at the end would have the concentration of the trails coming together to cross it. I mean, that's an access point. In the evening, all the thermals would follow that down. That'd be a good spot. Yeah. It's a good starting point. Do you want to be above them? Think? Or do you think they're going to be? I'll be below because I think that they're going to come through in the evening and the, the, the thermals are going to turn and drop. This would be a bad access for here. Push you. Yeah. <laughs> It's a pretty vertical drop, ain't it? Here's a bed right here. Okay. And this little hole. Right now I'm scouting some stuff behind uh, some private properties and homes where there's a little strip of uh, public. But getting back in here so far, I don't even see a rub or a scrape or anything. Old ones, historical ones, but nothing new. So how'd you do? Found some good sign. Really? Yeah, as you know. soon as you dropped me off, I found a scrape. Cool. And then as I was coming up to the, the creek, I saw, you know, rubs, broken off rubs, 
um, just along the Kirk line, line we would uh, we would have probably expected them to be there if they're there. Mm -hmm. And then when I crossed that, found, I found some better sign over there too. Okay. You didn't go too far, did you? I went up the ridge a little bit, and I found a scrape up there, and then I'm like, I'm seeing acorns, and they're everywhere. It's mm -hmm. a good mass over there, so I'm like, okay. So you backed out. I backed out, yeah. Okay. So no, we didn't see anything. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But I, what I saw, I mean, like, it was good enough where I'm like, we can hunt this. And, and then good. as soon as I came out, I saw three deer sitting on the road, and then as I was walking back down, I saw another five, and they, they blew at me, so. All right, well, let's just leave that for, for you for tonight, and then let's go find some more stuff. All right. Well, this is kind of the ingredients I was looking for in the uh, hunting public challenge. Now, I've hunted an hour and 45 minutes north of here for, boy, 19 gun seasons. You know, we always talked about at deer camp that the deer are bigger down here, the antlers are bigger, the weights, body weights, but it's because we're near ag land. And one of the things I like to hunt is we're coming into the backside of public land and we're going in and getting on the backside of private land with corn. And uh, so we're gonna head in, we're a long ways. We, we have to put our head down, walk about a mile and a half, and then we'll get back into that backside area that I like. And I like the diversity because we're coming in high up on a uh, ridge system, and then it drops down into a marsh. They call it a beaver marsh. And so just for those transition areas and the change in habitat, um, that's going to provide deer. But when you have distant corn fields out in the open, a lot of pasture fields, and just gonna see, you know, hopefully we're not getting into the, an area where there's a lot of people hunting, but we're just looking for some sign. Let's get back to where we want to go. And we're not seeing any signs on now. And really, until we get back closer to the corn, because we're still a quarter mile away, half mile away, but there's no reason to see sign. And now we're getting to this spot, start seeing old historical sign and then fresh sign. So the combination of both is incredible. So we get, get some really good rubs back here. And one thing that's really important, these leaves that just come down in the last week, especially with hard rains and winds, sort of find these shavings on top of the leaves, that means they're just days old, these are all a few days old. So we're looking at some really good sign here the fresh sign. Try to hide from the local folk, you know. This gives me away. <laughs> Here, it's a huge scrape right here. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'd say we found a good spot, dude. All right, we're going in. It's starting to rain pretty hard, but Greg and I want to get some eyes on this ground. We've been driving around this particular block, talking about the diversity. Obviously, we've been hitting that home. So we're going up in here, I mean, seven yards from the gate, and there's this great, I like plowed through a tree being weird. And then I was like, as I came up from the tree, the scrape was presented to me right in the trail, so I feel pretty good about that. <laughs> Looking for where high concentrations of deer are and then starting to actually kind of zone in on some of these buck bedding areas back in this hill country stuff. There's oaks, there's scrapes, there's deer, let's hunt them. Yeah, look at this. Just so many scrapes. I mean, probably just one buck walking down this road, but fresh. Cause like it's such a, it's just so, it's big, it's big scale. I don't think we're anywhere near deer right now. And I think like, Right now, I feel confident moving fast. For one, we're not making any noise. Two, 
feel confident moving fast because we're not bumping into any deer bedded despite the sign. So it's like, you know, we feel that the deer are up high. And I think, you know, covering this ground is important now to move fast. Now, we w it would look way different if we were up on a ridge up there where we think these deer are bedded. We'd be going way slower, glassing a lot more, trying to see something ahead or up for slide if you found yourself down here. Maybe you'd expect to see deer filtering through, but right now we're assuming they're up. There's a couple big oaks right here. They're dropping into this mowed path. And you can just look around and you can see how the grass is super matted. There's multiple scrapes right here under these trees. You can see there's kind of just trails coming to this spot. This is feeding sign that we're looking for that's fresh. We're gonna kind of go up around here, keep scouting, and then loop back to the truck. Maybe this is something we revisit, but there's bucks in here. Decent diameter and it's decently high, but it's got like a lot of good claw marks on it. Yeah. There's definitely enough going on to revisit this area. And we've got several scrapes at the base of this ridge, and this is all like select cut in some fashion. There's all these young trees, but there's enough gaps where I think a big buck can just bed in there, stand up and browse. Dear love that. Watched them a lot feed on this and then just like tiptoe through it and they sometimes barely leave a trail but there's definitely trails coming out of this and we did see a pretty good looking rub back there that had i mean we don't want to walk through it but the deer definitely want to and they can bed down you never see them in there i can i can honestly say i feel pretty dang good about right here i think we're just going to keep moving try to find as many of these as we can today and then kind of formulate game plans based off of it. I mean, the tough part is, is it's big. It's like a long, long ridge, so he could be bedded there, but he could also be bedded, you know, 400 yards up, food everywhere. And, and bedding, I'm assuming, is again gonna be up high. At some point, we're gonna get up top. There's another rub up there. This is money. Makes you feel good when you walk into your pen. That you pin from hundreds and thousands. Thousands? Hundreds of miles. Hundreds of millions, thousands of thousands and millions of miles away. Hundreds of miles away. Pick a spot and come up here and there's all this buck sign. Feels pretty good. Scrape, rub, scrape, scrape, scrape. Rubs are picking up, which makes me feel really good because we were seeing scrapes right by the car. Look who showed up. Huh? Look who showed up. So tell me what happened on the way here. You, you won the contest? Almost. It ain't dead yet. Oh, you didn't first, get it. First one you wounded it. it. Wounded it, yeah. First one I hit a deer. 140 mm. inches. Doesn't count. It was in Wisconsin. Is that your weapon of choice? Yeah. So tell us what happened. 
Buck ran out in front of you? Yeah, yeah. Um, half hour from my house, Buck ran out in front of me and uh, smoked him. You're not having much luck. A bit. No, I didn't get the timber yet. Wait till I get the timber. That won't be about luck. You know, today. Yeah, we're in for a workout. Yeah. Yeah, we got to find some deer. Good luck, guys. That sounded sarcastic. All right, we're done. We're not hunting Pennsylvania anymore. This place sucks. <laughs> just kidding. We're, we're going to be back. We're just going to go check out a different area. We're, we're now feeling like, you know, we might have just found the best stuff in public land in Pennsylvania. So we got to go get some reference here. Onward we go. Hopefully everybody else is finding some good stuff. Good luck! Rifle season's coming someday! Do you see him? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that majestic 11 boy. Yeah. Looking good, dude. Muzzle loader antler list is open. You better grow those things out a little bit more if you don't want to get shot at. <laughs> Looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> That's one that doesn't have a lot of experience yet. Alright, so. Tim and Rick are hunting up there. Uh, Tim's hunting a bunch of sign uh, back there. He went in and looked at a draw. Looked good. Uh, Rick went up a little further, found a scrape and a fresh rub still bleeding. He's sitting there. Um, I'm really liking this river bottom. Joe just got here and he's going to be filming today. And I'm going to be hunting and I'm dropping in here never seeing it before. We're just going to go by. Um, there's a little draw going up the other side and there's a couple points coming in on a leeward side and there's a lot of good terrain up there that looks like bedding and I think there's some good oaks in there from looking up on the hill I can see the red leaves from the oak trees so uh, it's do or die we're just gonna go in there and see what we find and set up and and whatever happens happens Looks like we kicked two does out of here. There's two little beds there. We just had that one big rub done in the bottom where he hung around about setting off. Then we moved up a little further thinking maybe they're coming from this ridge and we ran into this uh, ATV trail and uh, we walked up the ATV trail and saw this uh, run at the uh, top third elevation and uh, we climbed up the hill and got into here along this ridge and uh, right away there's a lot of rubbing going on up here. Um, now the rubs look a little bit old, like two weeks old, but uh, the tracks that were on the trail were fresh. So we got rubs right here. That could be two different bosses. There's a historical rubber Joe standing there. There's a pine tree over there. You notice how the pine tree's dead? That rub was done a couple weeks ago. It's got a, probably when their ant antlers first came out of velvet, which is concerning, but the trail's got fresh tracks on it. So there's a lot of historical sign here too. I, mean, I think we're just going to follow the ridge a little ways and see what we see. Yeah, it looks like there might be some more oaks up there. And if those yeah, are I dropping... I some more rubs up there. In the, in the, I got the tendency to believe they're dropping down to the acorns. And this sign was put here when the acorns were dropping. So I'd hate to kick him off of the hill if he's dropping from the hill to the bottom. Hear the blue jays going up there? Yeah, that's where I'd expect them to be. Mm -hmm. So uh, we decided to cover this ridge. We looked down the other way, and the sign just didn't look fresh as it does over here. But when we were setting up, we heard a deer blow up there. I don't know if he was uh, bedded and saw us climbing, or if he was coming down the hill. Um, it's late enough that it's possible either way, but uh, um, ran in here late. Uh, we're just going to give it a shot, and then... Uh, get back to the scouting tomorrow. We do got a really big rub just down below us, so. 
pile of stuff below the tree. A pile of beast gear. Now there's a pile of beast in the tree. Oh boy. So, um, a doe and a fawn came running down the hill, and then we heard a grunt behind them. And then when they got right underneath us, because they ran out, I never stood up. And they saw me silhouetted, and the doe spooked and, sc and uh, ran off to the side. And we looked up, and we could see a buck up there. Uh, Joe looked at it with his binoculars, it was a spike. And it just, he got around and then followed the doe and the fawn down the ridge. And then a little while later, Joe saw another deer walk through there I didn't see. But we still got a little time. We're going to keep waiting. Well, a lot of times, if it seems too easy, it's because it's not a good setup. But... We came back in here scouting where we wanted to. We have ag fields about three quarters of a mile that way. We're in between a couple of uh, old clear cuts. Let's say they're eight to ten years old. And we got up right here on the corner of an old field that's behind us back this way. And right up here there's a beautiful crossing with rubs that you can see from both sides of the logging trail. So I roughed up that scrape. I urinated in it, put a cell camera on it so it would be really cool to see. You know, if over the next three days, if we hunt, continue to hunt in this spot, um, what comes up? So we got in here with the rain. We went and picked up a uh, a uh, blind right here, pop-up blind. But we can cover this crossing right here really well. I'll probably you'll see him coming if he's coming through where the rubs and scraped are. The rubs and scraped over on this side are 30 yards away. You know, I'd love to see a monster, or I feel like we're in a remote area. That might change over the next couple days, but I think it's a good start to the public, public land hunting uh, public challenge. What Greg and I are going to do is we're going to bail out. No real reason to keep getting rained on and maybe get back to the truck, drive around the general vicinity, see what we see. Maybe we get some sort of pattern on some deer. Maybe not, but either way, we're going to be back at camp, see what everybody else saw. I'm sure there'll be some deer hunting talk back at camp. Then we look up and there's a whole bunch of scrapes. And uh, walk over there and I'm like, look at all these scrapes and stuff. And all of a sudden I noticed there's turkey tracks, and I'm like, oh, that's it. Was, it was turkey glides. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we, we did the it same thing. It was underneath a licking brand, so it almost... Well, there was like scrapes mixed in with them, but then yeah. you felt so embarrassed because I'm like, look at all of them. <laughs> and I'm, like, I'm like, oh, man, I think that's turkeys in it. Like, yeah. like amateur hour. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, delete that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're keeping that down. <laughs> I got plans to like really pick that thing apart because like I think there's probably a lot of bucks using it. Just Greg and I figured there's 20 scrapes up around that top. Mm -hmm. Every tree that this is this big is rubbed but then there were some that were like pretty good height had some real crazy like shred. Yeah. It almost looks like something has some bases on it but we'll see. Nice. Any luck? No. No. So I found some good sign though. Good, good rub scrape and Deer blew ass tonight, so you're close. Yeah. Hey, Dad. Hi, how's it going? Good. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you. When did you get that vest? I don't know. Had it for a while. What the heck? That's tethered. Kind of slick, nice. huh? How did <laughs> you get slick. one? I think they gave them all of us. 
No, I certainly them. did not. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's just finding out that you're the only one that got one. All right. We are wrapping up day one. Sounds like everybody enjoyed themselves out there today. No, no, no mm -hmm. big buck sightings, but learning a new area, you got to start somewhere. So back at it again tomorrow. Hopefully rain stops. I don't like the rain, so hopefully it stops. But maybe everybody else wants the rain. I don't know. Maybe it'll keep keep people like me out of the woods, and that's a good thing. So <laughs> all right, we well, got I guess Joe and Cam now. Oh yeah, Joe's and Cam. Okay. Ted and Aaron are now here. Yeah, we almost hit like five different deer coming in here i think tomorrow is the the start of the start of uh some epic buck footage and maybe somebody will even start using the term throwing the term quest around chasing one or something we greg and i already got name one named shredder in there so it's getting weird so it's going to continue to get weird tomorrow and hopefully you know the action stays you know the fun keeps the fun's going to keep happening it's going to be fun regardless we'll see you tomorrow Hopefully someone's zeroing in. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully somebody does better than what we did today, ultimately. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. <laughs>